You are watching Kings. Every Saturday, we tell the story of how big brands conquered the world. Today, we're looking at how Louis Vuitton became the king of luxury. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers. It's great to have you here with us today as we're breaking down how Louis Vuitton became the luxury giant it is today. In this video, we're looking at how the company came to be, the strategy they used, the struggles they had to overcome, and if you watch until the end, you'll learn what the future holds for this luxury industry. But first, let's start with some numbers. Louis Vuitton, the big picture. Let's begin with the facts, as a company celebrating 165 years in business will carry many incredible achievements that some believe are fiction. As of May 2018, Louis Vuitton is recorded as the 15th most valuable brand in the world, sitting amongst the most reputable luxury brands as a division of LVMH, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. Headquartered in Paris, France, this $33 billion company delivered $12.9 billion in sales from products such as its well-known trunks, handbags, shoes, watches, jewelry, leather goods, and perfume. As a fashion house and luxury retail giant with more than 121,000 employees throughout 460 stores in 65 countries worldwide, LV casts a colossal shadow over their competitors such as Burberry, Gucci, and Prada, to name a few. But how did it all start? The Beginning Birthed in Paris, the city of love, in 1854, Louis Vuitton Meletier, through mere observation, realized that trunks at the time, though they adorned rounded tops to assist with the runoff of water, they couldn't easily be stacked, and so he introduced the flat top trunks with Trianon canvas, making them considerably more lightweight and airtight. We can imagine with such a simple idea, Louis Vuitton may have appeared as revolutionary as his flat-top trunks were in the world of hand luggage. However, at the beginning of his journey, he may not have realized he was about to make history. Louis Vuitton was born August 4, 1821 in Anchet to Caron Gaillard, a millionaire, and his father, Xavier Vuitton, a farmer. He arrived in Paris at the age of 16 after leaving home in eastern France on foot after the passing of his mother. He became the apprentice of Monsieur Maréchal as a box maker and packer where he stayed for 17 years. What we may consider in society today as a low-end job, during that time, travelers hired craftsmen to build boxes to protect and pack their personal items, as it was a time where carriages, trains, and boats were the main forms of transportation. If you think your luggage gets handled roughly at airports now, imagine your luggage on the back of a horse-driven carriage. Becoming highly sought after for his services, Louis Vuitton got the attention of the Empress of France, Eugénie de Montillo, and was appointed as her personal packer and trunk maker. You may not recognize the name Eugénie de Montillo, but maybe you recognize her husband's name, Napoleon III. Yes, the first elected king of France. You definitely can't ask for a better break into business than getting hired by the wife of the king. With such success and now having access to elite clientele, Louis Vuitton began receiving personal orders from as far as Egypt, from the Khedive Ismail Pasha. He expanded into a larger workshop in Asnier, a village outside of Paris in 1859. In 1870, the Franco-Prussian War caused Louis Vuitton's business to grind to a halt. The conflict created civil unrest and brought the French Empire to an end. When the war was over and the smoke cleared a year later, Louis Vuitton returned to find the village and his shop in ruins. The equipment that was not destroyed by the war was stolen, and his staff had long evacuated the city. 
Regardless of this situation, Louis Vuitton came from a strong lineage and worked diligently. Within months, he reopened his shop. What else could you expect from someone willing to walk 300 miles to seek a better life? With his shop reopened and with the growing popularity of Louis Vuitton trunks, competing luggage and trunk makers began to imitate his design. In an effort to protect his work, Louis Vuitton changed the Trianon canvas design to beige and brown stripes. However, just three years after opening his first store on Oxford Street, London, Louis Vuitton was faced with having to deal with replicas of his designs reappearing. Furthering his efforts to protect his brand, he created the Dimer canvas, which bore a mark that reads Marquis L. Vuitton Déposé which translates into El Vuitton registered trademark. Strategy Louis Vuitton began positioning his products as a global brand exhibiting at locations in Paris and across the United States, which continued even after his death. He was regarded as a specialist packer for the discerning traveler, who in that era were exploring the new trade and shipping routes. In tribute to his father, Georges Vuitton launched the signature LV monogram canvas, and it was with this that they were also able to curtail the counterfeiting of their innovative designs, which now included their steamer bag, a smaller piece of luggage designed to be stored inside Vuitton luggage trunks, gaining them worldwide recognition. The Defining Moment the crowning moment came when the Louis Vuitton company opened their largest store on Champs-Élysées. It was the largest of its kind in the world at the time. Expansion continued as they opened store locations in New York, Washington, London, Alexandria, Bombay, and Buenos Aires. The Value Luxury brands and luxury products are differentiated by their exceptional quality. They possess a level of creative audacity. They are rare, unique, and to those that buy them, the price is not an issue. Louis Vuitton placed absolute quality and tradition at the core of the company by having their products handmade by expert craftsmen using the finest materials. When you purchase one of Louis Vuitton's products, it's not merely a bag or a trunk that's purchased. You're purchasing its heritage, its craftsmanship, its timeless qualities, and last but not least, Louis Vuitton bags are waterproof and fireproof. With such value and demand, it's almost understandable why Louis Vuitton is ranked in the top 10 pirated luxury brands in the world, especially in Asian countries, with losses estimated at 323 billion US dollars just last year. LVMH, with their team of attorneys and private investigators, have been proactive in regards to protecting their brand, currently spending an estimated 18.5 million US dollars a year. Apart from the obvious expense incurred by the company and being deprived of profit, counterfeiting ruins the uniqueness, exclusivity, and perceived quality of the brand. Luxury brands ensure that high quality is the only perception any consumer should have about their products. Controversy Though with many strides in innovation and growth, the Louis Vuitton company did not escape unscathed from scandal over the years. In the French book Louis Vuitton, A French Saga, by Stephanie Bonvassini, it was said that Louis Vuitton, associated with the Nazis during the German occupation of France, collaborating with the government led by Marshal Philippe Pétain, and increased their wealth from doing business with the Germans. Fast forward to the 21st century, Louis Vuitton faced off with Danish art student Nadia Plesner in 2007 for allegedly infringing on their intellectual property rights using what appeared to be a representation of one of their designer bags in an illustration entitled Simple Living. The court ruled in favor of Louis Vuitton, noting that the illustration did clearly infringe on their copyright. 
However, this was short-lived, as Nadia Plesner continued using the image, justifying it as an artistic freedom, and the court in the Netherlands later ruled in her favor. If you're looking to learn some more about the brand, click in the top right corner to watch our 15 Things You Didn't Know About Louis Vuitton video. The Results the Louis Vuitton brand maintained its focus on becoming world leaders in the fashion and luxury retail industry. With their monogram revamped so it can be used on a variety of products, Louis Vuitton merged with Moet and & Chandon and Hennessy in 1987. Thus, the conglomerate we know today as LVMH was born. Needless to say, over the next year they saw an astounding 49% increase in sales as they opened 130 stores worldwide. To stay current with emerging trends, Louis Vuitton brought on designer Marc Jacobs as their artistic director, and for 16 years, he guided the company through some of their most memorable releases, such as the Pret-a-Porter line of clothing, the monogram Vernus line, and the Louis Vuitton City Guide. While most have been worried about the trade wars between the U.S. and China, LVMH has been a driving force all on their own within the luxury industry. LVMH has still been able to increase sales of their luxury retail items and record growth in their wine and spirit section. We can definitely see from the humble apprenticeship days of Louis Vuitton Meletier to the powerhouse that is now LVMH that success does not happen overnight and you have to be prepared to go through your fair share of wars and transformations to be successful. The Future Louis Vuitton has recognized that consumers have been wanting more options to customize their purchases, so they have a sense of owning a unique item. And now, there's a growing interest in seeing brand collaborations, especially since their successful collaboration with pop artist Jeff Koons and their pop-up shop campaign with Supreme, one of the most influential street fashion brands. Those creative collaborations showed innovation in the way Louis Vuitton wanted to connect with their consumers. In fact, a couple of years ago, with the help of their new chief digital officer, Ian Rogers, LVMH launched 24 Sèvres, a website for Le Bon Marché, one of LVMH's department stores in Paris. The website was designed to peak user experience with exclusive sections as well as the opportunity to have a video call with a stylist in Paris. We will continue to see Louis Vuitton as part of this conglomerate acquire more brands, one of them being Christian Dior two years ago for $13.1 billion. Recently, they named Virgil Abloh as their artistic director of menswear, which spurred another round of collaborations. Moet and Shandon created an exclusive collaboration with Virgil Abloh, releasing limited edition bottles distinguishable by the words Do Not Drop on the side, as well as the luxury luggage brand Rimoa, which happens to be one of the companies LVMH also bought three years ago, teamed up with Virgil to create a one-of-a-kind transparent polycarbonate carry-on suitcase. And we can't forget to mention LVMH's present collaboration with Rihanna's Fenty, which has given momentum to their perfume and cosmetics division. Fenty Beauty has been under development with Kendo Holdings, the LVMH group incubator for beauty brands for the last three years. So why only the recent buzz? When you're creating a product that carries 91 variations exclusively with Sephora and orchestrating a simultaneous unveiling at 1,600 stores in 17 countries, it may take a while. But CEO of LVMH Bernard Arnault has said, We are confident for 2019, which got off to a good start, but we're not in control of the global environment. LVMH has been keeping an eye on the demand for their luxury goods in China. Though there has been more demand in the last four months, they still observed a shift in consumer spending. Despite the fear around trade wars and exits from unions, the personal luxury goods market has seen an increase in revenue over the last nine years. 
Though facing shifting economic trends, digital transformation and the ever-evolving consumer needs creating new competitive landscapes, nullifying traditional strategies, the luxury industry will continue to grow. This growth has widely been to the increase in consumption in Asian countries. With emerging technologies and the luxury shopper getting younger, luxury brands have to innovate and adapt to their needs and how they communicate with their clients. Be it through personalized user experiences with augmented reality or increasing their expenditure on marketing through social media. The main concern of any luxury company right now in this digital era would be how to stay connected, how to engage consumers, and not to compromise their brand or lose exclusivity. Louis Vuitton has struck a balance between exclusivity and accessibility. They couldn't have positioned themselves any better. We do see them improving some of their online applications in the future to stay competitive. However, in this vast empire, they are definitely king. Now, what do you Aluxers think? Is Louis Vuitton still relevant in your perception, or would you go for a different brand? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.